In the late 19th century in the American town of Pickelville, Kentucky, the population suffered from an unknown disease. Particularly tragic was the case of Octavia Smith Hatcher. After the death of her young son in January 1891, Octavia became depressed, fell ill and slipped into a coma. On 2nd of May that year she was pronounced dead and buried in the local cemetery. No embalming was carried out and soon many townspeople fell ill with the same disease, slipping into a coma but then waking up. Octavia's husband began to fear that his wife had been buried alive and ordered an exhumation. His fears were confirmed, the coffin was scratched, the woman's nails were broken and bloody, and there was terror on her face. Octavia died having been buried alive. Her body was reburied and her husband erected a monument over her grave. It was later discovered that the mystical illness was caused by the tsetse fly, an African insect capable of causing sleeping sickness. No one expects to be buried alive after a first date, but that was the unexpected ending to Octavia's story. One horrific incident happened in May 2014, when 25-year-old Frenchwoman Mina Elaware chatted with a possible fiancé online for months before traveling to Morocco to meet him. On 19th of May, she checked into a hotel in Fessa, Morocco, for her first real date with the man of her dreams. However, she never left the hotel. Mina met the man and they spent a lovely evening together, at the end of which she suddenly collapsed unconscious. Instead of calling the police or an ambulance, the man thought Minna was dead and buried her in his garden. It turned out that Minna, suffering from diabetes, had fallen into a diabetic coma and was buried alive. A few days later, the girl's family reported her missing and came to Morocco to find her. Moroccan police found the man and then discovered the grave in his yard where dirty clothes and the shovel he had used to bury the girl were also found. The man confessed to the crime and was charged with murder. In July 1893, a farmer and his wife were living in Whitehaven, Pennsylvania, when the wife died suddenly of unknown causes. Doctors pronounced her dead and she was buried, but a friend later told the farmer that his wife had suffered from hysteria before they met and she might not have died a natural death. The thought of burying his wife alive haunted the farmer and he became hysterical himself. With the help of friends, he exhumed his wife's body to confirm his fears. What he found shocked him, the body had been turned over, her clothes torn, the glass lid of the coffin shattered, shards scattered all over the body. Her skin was covered with bruises and wounds and her fingers were missing. No one knows what happened to the farmer after this gruesome discovery. Some of the most horrifying stories of being buried alive are not so terrible because some victims miraculously survived, such as the case of Angela Hayes in 1937. Angela was a 19-year-old boy living in saint Couverne, France. One day he crashed his motorbike into a brick wall and was soon pronounced dead. Three days later he was buried. However, in the nearby town of Bordeaux, the insurance company became suspicious when they learned that Angela's father had recently insured his son's life for 200,000 francs. An inspector was sent to the scene, and when the grave was opened they discovered that Angela was still alive. Two days after the funeral, the inspector demanded that Angela's body be exhumed to confirm the cause of death. However, he was in for an absolute surprise, the boy was not dead. When the doctor removed his burial clothes, his body was still warm and his heart was barely beating. He was immediately rushed to hospital, where he underwent several operations and rehabilitation before making a full recovery. He was unconscious the whole time due to a severe head injury. After his recovery, the boy invented a coffin from which he could escape in case of premature burial and traveled with his invention around France, becoming something of a celebrity. In 1917, John Snart published A Thesaurus of Horrors, in which he told the gruesome story of a man named Mr. Cornish being buried alive. Cornish was the beloved mayor of Bath, who had died of fever some 80 years before Snart published his work.
As was customary at the time, the body was buried fairly quickly after the announcement of death. The gravedigger was about to finish his work when he decided to take a break and have a drink with a few passing acquaintances. He stepped away from the grave to chat with the visitors and suddenly they all heard gasping moans coming from Mr. Cornish's half-filled grave. The gravedigger realized he had buried the man alive and tried to save him while there was still oxygen in the coffin. By the time they had cleared all the dirt and were able to remove the coffin lid, it was too late because Cornish had died with his elbows and knees bloodied. The story so frightened Cornish's older half-sister that she asked her relatives to cut off her head after she died so that she would not suffer the same fate. Hey, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You have to subscribe to the channel and like it so you don't miss new videos. It's scary to imagine someone being buried alive, but it becomes even more unimaginably horrific when the victim is a teenager. That's exactly what happened to a 16-year-old girl from the Indian settlement of Waterpur Pradesh in August 2014. According to the girl's uncle, a family who had recently settled nearby told her that her mother had asked them to take the girls to a neighboring settlement. She agreed to go with them, but when they reached a sugarcane field, the couple, for unknown reasons, decided to strangle the girl and bury her on the spot. Fortunately, some people working in the field saw the couple leave without the girl. They found her unconscious in a hastily dug shallow grave in the middle of the field. The concerned people managed to get the girl to a hospital in time and when she regained consciousness she was able to talk about her captors. The girl has no memory of being buried alive and the police have not figured out why the couple decided to kill her. As long as people are alive, the challenges to fate will continue. There are even textbooks nowadays that tell you what to do if you are buried alive and how to avoid dying. People go so far as to voluntarily bury themselves to play with death. In 2011, a 35-year-old man from Russia did just that and tragically died of unknown causes. The man believed that being buried alive for 24 hours would make him happy for the rest of his life. He dug himself a grave outside the city of Blagoveshensk where he placed a homemade coffin equipped with an air tube, a water bottle, and a mobile phone. After the man got into the coffin, his friend covered it with earth and left. The man called his friend only once to say that he was feeling fine. However, when his friend returned to the burial site the next morning, the man was already dead. It turned out that an overnight rain had blocked a ventilation pipe, and the man had suffocated in his own coffin. Despite the tragedy of this story, the tendency to be buried alive was quite common, and few people know who suffered the same fate. This story is about a London butcher by the name of Lawrence Catherine, who was struck down by an unknown disease in 1661. The landowner on whose property the butcher worked was interested in his imminent death in order to inherit the man's estate. She promptly pronounced him dead without consulting a doctor, and the poor man was soon buried in a nearby chapel. Visitors and mourners heard screams and cries coming from the grave and rushed to dig up his coffin, but it was too late. The clothes in which he was buried were torn to shreds, his eyes were swollen and his head was bloodied beyond recognition. The woman was accused of burying the man alive, a story that has been passed down through the generations for hundreds of years. In 1993, a 24-year-old South African man named Sifiso William Dasha and his fiancée were involved in a serious car accident. Sifiso's fiancée survived, but he himself was so badly injured that he was pronounced dead. His body was taken to the morgue and placed in a metal box for burial, but in fact he was still alive and unconscious for two days. He was in the box until he regained consciousness and realized where he was and luckily the mortuary staff were there to help him. However, when Sifiso returned home to his fiancée, she rejected him, saying he was a zombie who had come to be buried alive, which was terrible. In 1987 the media's richest heir, Stevens Mole, was kidnapped and buried alive in a makeshift wooden box near the U.S. town of Kankakee, Illinois. 
He was kidnapped by a 30-year-old man called Danny Edwards and his 26-year-old girlfriend Nancy Rich decided to support him underground by demanding a ransom of $1 million from his relatives. The couple buried the 39-year-old man a meter underground, providing him with minimal air, water and light. Sadly, he suffocated and police only found him after discovering his dark maroon Mercedes near the burial site. Although the couple were eventually tried and sentenced to long terms, there is still debate as to whether the murder was premeditated or not. Either way, it was a horrific crime with tragic consequences, and Edwards will spend another 27 years behind bars.